So welcome to, to the ring for Liesl. Um, does it work, actually? Yeah, very good. <laughs> um, I do the first part, which is a Gothic theory, the first five lectures. Then Hans Bert Rademacher comes with geometry, and then Matthias Schwarz with dynamical systems. So, part one, a Gothic theory. And first, some announcements. So, my name. And the best way to reach me is to write me an email. So, I'm at the university, not here. So there will be an exercise class to to the ring for Lesung. Um, yeah, I know. Kesta uh, is a, will do it here. <laughs> Good. The, the time I don't know. So you, you will probably announce, uh, right? Can, can we ask quickly? Yes. So, do it. Sorry, I plan to do the exercise session uh, on Thursday morning. So those who are obliged to go or those who want to go, is that okay for you? Thursday morning at nine. In objections. <laughs> so I was told that you're supposed to hand in exercise sheets, at least those which are members of the IMPS. So I propose that you hand in the homework <laughs> next week at this time to me, and that we do the next first exercise session on Thursday of next week. Talk about the exercises. So if there is no objections, Thursday at nine, probably in uh, A three zero one or two. I will have uh, asked you, Jörg, to make a proper announcement when I have the moment. Okay, thank you. And now some further announcements. Um, so lecture next week will be one hour earlier next week, and it is eight, 11th of April. It will be at 12:15 to 13:45 because there is some something else later. I don't know exactly. So it will be shifted one uh, hour earlier. And then no lecture. No lecture on on the 2nd of May. I'm the whole week not here. And therefore, double lecture before. Before. So I will I will say you when exactly approximate, so presume, yeah. For example, for example, on the week before, on 25th of April. So next week, one hour later, uh, and then a double lecture, probably on 25th. No lecture on second. And after second, Hans Petra de Macher will come with geometry. So you will have one week rest in between. Good. Then one more announcement. Um, we have a seminar very much related to this lecture at the university. Seminar. A Gothic theory. Theory of group actions. which will, would be a continuation of, of my part. <laughs> okay. Um, this will do with Tobias Finis. Tobias Finis and Atom Sapoznikov. So in this lecture, we will only consider Z as a group, action of Z. So you, you will see uh, soon. And here, some other groups um, will be considered. And this is, a, this is an active area of research now. So my lecture, <laughs> this part of ring for leasing will be classical theory, and th this will be active area of research. So everybody's welcome to, to participate and also to make a talk. The first talk will be, so first talk, will be on uh, 24th, no, sorry, 25th, <laughs> 25th on amenable groups. 
so if you have if if you're interested you can contact some some of us right or even me after the for, after the lecture right so i hope that yeah on this day we will finish ergodic theory so you will be able to follow if you want to follow the talks in the seminar even to make one if you want good i think it's enough of announcements and now i hope that this will work. Let's see. Um, mm, uh, this doesn't look good. Yes, OK, very good. So I got a theory. Yes, the file of, of the lecture will be also available, I hope, if it will be saved correctly. So just the first. Section, what is ergodic theory? Because the name doesn't explain, right, what it is. Uh, does somebody know what ergodic theory is? Well, apart from people <laughs> who already heard. Okay, very good. Then it will be not boring, hopefully. Hopefully, not boring. <laughs> no, sorry for that. So, the birth of the theory, or origin, goes back to approximately 1880. And the father of the theory is Ludwig Boltzmann, who was, by the way, also some years professor in Leipzig. After. after the origin. The was one statistical mechanics. So here's the model which he was interested in. Given a region in R3, for example, you can imagine this room. Yeah. We have a region in R3, for example, this room. And we have k particles moving freely. Particles, ideal gas. Okay, I will write here. So here we have the region. OK, in R3. And we have particles, really many. Yeah? And every particle is moving in some direction. And we assume there is no in big interaction, et cetera. So. No, ideal gas. So it's a very simplified model for now. <clears throat> So the system is described by 6k parameters, right? Coordinates. Oh, that doesn't work. OK, coordinates. Coordinates. Right, 3k geometric coordinates. Every particle has a geometric coordinate. And 3k, for example, velocity. Right, so. We have here, once again, the picture. Yeah, many particles. So, and instead of considering these many particles, we can just consider a point in R3. It describes the system at this moment. Uh, sorry, thank you. 6K, of course. R6K, yes. Right? So, state of the system. is a point in R6K. Yeah, but not every point in R6K comes, yeah, is a state of a system, so not every point is possible by physical reasons. So um, define 
x to be the set of all possible states of the system. And this is some region in R to the power 6k. So here we don't get the whole R to the power 6k, but some x, all possible states. And this we denote by the states, state system, uh, space. Moment. Oh, one second. Yes. Okay, this state space. Now, the interesting part is that the system develops in time. The particles are moving. Right? So in one time unit, say one second, we have another state of the system. And then there is a law how the states move in, in the time unit. So the system, system changes. Yeah. In one time unit, say second, second, according to some law. And this law we denote by t, which is from x to x. Right, we have a point in x, and in one second we have another point in x. This is the action of t. So here, x, x tx, and this is, yes. Time is discrete. Here time is discrete, yes. One can also, of course, consider the continuous time. In this lecture we'll consider the discrete time. So the orbit, yeah, now what, what do we want to know? We want to know what happens with our system when the time goes. In one, two, three million seconds, yeah, et cetera. So we're interested in the orbit. The orbit x, t x, t square x, et cetera, describes the time evolution. Describes the evolution. of the system in time. So how do you think, what can I one ask? What one would like to know? Are they periodic? For example, yes. So exactly, what, what happens with the system? What, what is the orbit? Is it periodic? Is it, where, yeah, where is the orbit in okay. So how does, T and X behave for large N. Um, yes, please ask me questions during the lecture. Of course, you can also ask after, but maybe it's quicker if you ask during. So now difficulties. Well, there are many. You didn't so, tell us what is the law. Yet. Yes, the law, exactly. So the law, one has to compute, and it's not easy, yes. First, the law is not very simple, yes. Then also, <laughs> even the point x is not very simple to, to find. Yeah, imagine you have very many particles, yeah? And you have to know exactly every geometric coordinate and every velocity, so x, not always or never completely known. Yes, it's too much to, well, a lot <laughs> um, to compute then. Yeah. Also, yes, the law is not easy and T and X is difficult to calculate. Yeah, even if t was known, yeah, imagine even you have a two by two matrix and you want to know, no, no, 
a millionth power of it. Yeah. Even then, it's <laughs> yeah, non-trivial, right? And t is much more complicated than a two by two matrix, right? But difficult to calculate. <clears throat> but still, one wants to say something about it, even if one doesn't know it exactly. Good. Now, the idea of Boltzmann. was a statistical approach. Statistical approach. So his observation was that if there is a region right here, the state space, yes, and there is this orbit, which is difficult to calculate, right? Then one can simplify the problem a bit. One takes a region A, a subregion, subset, right? And then instead of calculating x exactly, one can just check whether x is an A or x in, is not an A. Whether t x is an A or not, t square x in A or not. This is easier than to compute the point exactly, right? Oh, statistical approach, sorry. <laughs> So x in A or x not in A is simpler to check, easier to check than to determine x. So his question was then, <laughs> yes, so um, people who already heard this lecture are free to <laughs> <clears throat> right. So his question was, what uh, what can we say? So how what can we say about time with the orbit spans in A? Right. So his question was. What is the probability that Tn x is an A for a given A? Yeah, but probability. It's not yet being developed. Yes, not yet. And his yes, his view of probability is just time. He measures yeah. The more often the orbit is in A the more probable it is to be in A, right? So probability is, for him, time, which the system spends in A. So uh, how often does T and X visit A? And then he formulated his ergodic hypothesis, Boltzmann's Ergodic, famous ergodic hypothesis. Hmm. No. Hypothesis. So, what is the ergodic hypothesis? The time with the system spans in A, only depends on the how large A is. It doesn't depend on, on where A is. So, more precisely, the time the system spans, spans in A, equals, okay, now I leave some space, <laughs> the volume of A. Okay, what is the volume of A? In R to the power 6k, there is volume, right? And X has also volume, it has finite volume by physics. And so this volume which we take here, 
is the relative volume normalized normalized volume so so that the volume of x is 1 so the volume of a divided by the volume of x so now um, Yeah, why I left here. <laughs> the time this, the system spends. So how do we measure? How can we measure the time? You see, there are infinitely many points in the orbit. right? The idea is to consider the first n points. And look how many times we were in A. And then divide by, by the whole time until here. This will be the probability to be in A in the first n times. And then we let n go to infinity. Because otherwise we have something dependent on A, on n. So, so we have equals in mean, right? In mean. We take from 1 to n and we divide by n. And asymptotically, so we let n go to infinity. And then we have a number, yeah, which he claims is the volume, is the volume of A. So in mean and asymptotically, these are important words. Now the method first the short form time mean equals space mean. So what does it mean? Time mean is yeah, how much time we in mean and asymptotically the system spends in A. Now space mean is how large A is. Right. And now let's <laughs> write the formula. <laughs> So mathematically, so here what we have here the limit n to infinity, and here we have the volume volume of a. Right now we have <laughs> the mean and asymptotically we have already it's the limit, and now in mean, so we. We just count how many times. So we count n from 1 to n so that Tn is an A, time of visits. And we divide by n, right here, time 1 to 3, etc. n. Oh, time. Wonderful. Hmm. Okay. One second. Now. Okay, good. Not as bad. Yeah, sorry, the problem the problem is not good yet. And I have to use this. I can't do it on blackboard, that's why. Okay, limit n to infinity, the number of n so that n from 1 to big N, so that Tn x and A. <coughs> divided by n equals the volume of A. So 1 to n. And we count how many times we visited A the probability divided by n, and then the limit should be the volume. This is the hypothesis of Birkhoff. He couldn't prove it. It was proved after, well, I think 30 years after he died or something, uh, when mathematics was uh, far enough to do it. But first, yeah, let me 
rewrite it a bit. In a maybe more access accessible way. So 1 over n is here. Now let's rewrite this. The number of n's from 1 to big n so that tn x and a. This is nothing else than the sum n from 1 to a big n. And here we take the characteristic function of a every point t and x. Do you see that it's the same? So the ones here are exactly those n's where t and x and a. Right. And the limit should be so. And the volume we also write differently, differently as the integral of the same characteristic function. So now, instead of volume, we write mu. <laughs> Just quicker. Right? This is, the, this is mu of a. So, and the question, more, a bit more general question than the ergodic hypothesis. Well, what if we replace the characteristic function by just any function and write it first formally? And the question would be then, for which t, f, and x does the equality hold? So how do you think from this formulation? Is the ergodic hypothesis true or not? <laughs> hmm? No. Yeah, because I wrote for which <laughs> does it hold. So <laughs> the answer will be not for all. <laughs> yeah. So the ergodic hypothesis was too optimistic, yeah, but was very close to truth <laughs> for really many. Yeah, in fact, for almost all x, the equality holds. For general system, it holds for almost every x. If the system a bit is a bit better than general, then it holds even for every x. But in general, it doesn't hold always. And has some good points. But it was done later then. Now, some more remark on the system we have here. Um, mm -hmm. Clarification. Mu is really the big measure then, uh, what you call mu. Uh, on, on R to the, well, the, the normalized. The normalized. Normal. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the, the only complicated thing here is the t. <laughs> yes. To compute the t. Mu is just a normal Lebesgue measure. Um, right. So remark. Until now we have x and so this. Right. We have this x and we have t. And we have here the volume. This is the probability space, right? We assume that mu of x is 1. So, but until now, they, this mu doesn't have much to do with t. In fact, they have something to do, which is that, with each other. So, Liouville proves the following. So, Liouville's theorem, which doesn't have to do anything with holomorphic function. <laughs> completely different uh, setting. This T preserves mu. What does it mean, preserves? Uh, it means that if we consider the pre-image of a set, then it has the same measure as the set itself. Well, for every A measurable, yes. Yes, exactly. This transformation T yes, has the good property of preserving the volume. Yes. Mm -hmm. And 
Well, this comes from physics. Well, yeah. um, we will for sure not prove this. <laughs> um, but we will use it very much. Preserve the volume. So right here we have A, and the prey image looks maybe very different, but it has the same measure. Measure doesn't disappear. <coughs> so, so we have the following triple, X, mu, and T, where X, well, where this is a probability space. So this is a probability space. A very special probability space, right, and a very special T, but it is a measure preserving system. The measure is preserved by T. So now what is ergodic theory? Ergodic theory. It's just a theory of measure preserving systems. Is theory of measure, uh, I think one writes it like this, preserving systems uh, or transformations, measure preserving transformations. It studies the behavior of orbits of orbits of points and sets. Right, one can work with points. It is difficult, right? Just to determine the point is already difficult, yes. Or one can work with sets, it's easier. A bit easier. Uh, one can look in A, at A and see how A moves through the space. It's a bit easier to localize a set than to localize a point. Now. This is a Gordic theory, and um, the word Gordic was used by Birkhoff, and he didn't really explain what it means. <laughs> um, so, origin of ergodic, of this word ergodic, is not completely clear. <laughs> um, there are several. So, ergodus is difficult, but how well, I don't think that he meant that. <laughs> uh, difficult theory, no. Um, the other, well, possible uh, interpretation, ergon is work in Greek, and odos, like ergodos, <laughs> um, is path. Work which is done by orbit. Oh, so something like this, maybe. It's not com. Yeah, he didn't explain. Um, it sounded good. Yes, sounded good and well, difficult for him. It was very difficult. Then it became a bit easier. At least his question was solved. And yes, we we will do the solution in the lecture during the lecture. Good. Now, next. This was what what is the Gordy theory next. Section measure preserving systems. Measure preserving systems. Definitions. The definition <laughs> and examples. So what is <coughs> what is great by Gordic theory is that physical motivation and application to physics is just one of many applications. Right? Agoric theory was motivated by a very particular model. But it developed, the mathematical theory developed uh, with time. <laughs> right? And 
It has many applications, not only in physics. It has applications in computer science. It has applications in well, stochastics, of course, and uh, number theory, where about prime numbers, behavior of prime numbers. It is very far from this model, right? But it still has a lot to do with measure preserving systems. Right? So we will not do, actually, we will, we will not really return to the physics. We will only say what the solution to the Birkhoff's ergodic theorem is. But yeah, I will try to do uh, connections to other areas also. Of course, we don't have much time. Uh, and this lecture is actually, well, I consider it is a very rough introduction uh, to wake your interest. As soon as the interest is waking, you could read, there are very good books and, right, you can read more. I will just try to give you an overview of what, what is there. So, uh, definition. One point one. So let X sigma mu be a probability space. And we often write just mu and not sigma mu. Often just X mu. Right, and say that sigma is in the definition of mu. Right, and let let T from X to X be measure preserving, uh, me measurable and mu preserving. Yeah, in the sense that mu of the pre image of a set is the same as mu of the set for every set in sigma. Right? The triple X mu T is called measure preserving dynamical systems measure preserving dynamical system. And it's very long, the name, so we will use MDS, measure preserving dynamical system. Good, and just the first remark, uh, measure preserving the property to be measure preserving just says that the prey images have the same measure. But what is with images? So here's A, here's A, and here the right, and here the prey image of A. And they have the same measure. Right? And T of course, transforms the pre-image to A. But maybe there are other points which also go to A. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. What do I want to say? No, no, no. Uh, one second. <laughs> um, no. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I don't use this picture. I use a different picture, sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, here we have Let's, let's use another letter, B. <laughs> no, of course not. Um, here with the... Okay, let's, let's do it. Here's CB. Right? But maybe there are points... Yeah, sorry. Uh, maybe there are points which also go to TB, which are not in B. Right? Something... So this goes here, but maybe there is something else going here, right? And this measure is, is, is no, uh, <coughs> the, the images, pre images have the same measure, right? So this has the same measure as this and all other points, the, all pre images, right? So this is smaller, less equal. So the images have larger measure than the set. If the pair images have the same measure, then images have larger or equal measure. This, this is, a, is a remark what happens with images. Remark, images 
have larger measure mu of t a is bigger or equal than mu of a. Just as a remark. Good. Now examples. And the the power, actually, the power of ergodic theory is that there are really many examples from different areas. I will not be able to present, of course, all the areas even, um, but to indicate at least a bit. So finite systems. If x is finite, finite set, right here, somehow, finite set, then there is always a measure. Right, the, so the counting measure, the normalized counting measure. Right, and mu, the rescaled counting measure. So, which transformations are measure preserving? How do you think? So that pre images have the same counting measure. Bijection. Bijection, yes. So T bijective, then it is an, an MDS. X mu T is an MDS. Ah, uh, there's a, well. Here the measure is very simple and. Now, next example, uh, example, sorry, example. Okay, 1.3. Good. The Bernoulli shift. Very important example. Bernoulli shifts, there are many of them. They're all very similar. So, there are two sided shifts and one sided shift. First, the two-sided shift. Two-sided shifts. One takes k, natural number, the number of letters. And then one takes an alphabet of so many letters, right? And well, in mathematical language, it's just the numbers from one, 0 to k minus 1. And then one considers all possible words with these letters, and the words go in both directions. Right, see. So all words with letters from 0 to k minus 1, two-sided. And, right. So, and which transformation, how do you think, uh, can one consider? What can one do with a word, with an infinite word? What kind of transformation can one do? There are many, but for example, there is a shift. <laughs> shift, right? Left or right, doesn't matter. Here, it doesn't matter. Now, um, let us take the left shift because it will be the same way it will matter. So, left shift. What does it mean? We take xj, a word, and it goes to a, the shifted word. So attention, <laughs> here the indices goes right, go right, but this is the left shift. <laughs> so what was before on the fifth place is now on the fourth place. It shifted to the left. So here's plus and shifted to the left. So here, a picture, let's say we have three letters, etc. And then we take here one, and here one, and here one, and here, and here, and here, and here right. Now, we, we have the T, and we have the X. We need a mu, a measure. Well, and here there is a canonical measure, 
uh, we have here product space, right? And then the product measure is somehow something what one immediately thinks about. Well, um, if one thinks about, then <laughs> this is natural. So the product measure. Uh, first, we need the sigma algebra. And the sigma algebra is the product. Sigma algebra generated by cylinders. So what is a cylinder? These are sets of the form n, then j1, etc., jn, and a1, etc., an. So we restrict finitely many coordinates. We say these j's are those which we coordinates which we restrict, and all others are free to choose. So they, they are all x, so that the j first coordinate is a1, etc. j n's coordinate is a n, and all other coordinates are free to choose. Right. So the cylinder sets, what what are they? For example, we restrict this coordinate to be there, here, and this to lie here, and this to lie here, and all other are free to choose. These are the sets. And it's easy to see that sigma is t invariant. If we shift such a cylinder, it's again a cylinder. Right? It's not important which coordinates we restrict. T invariant. Cylinder go to cylinder. So, and let now <laughs> to have a measure on the on the product space, we first need a measure on, on this on the alphabet. Any measure. Here, here we again have some freedom. So let P be a probability measure. Any on zero to k minus one. In fact, we just choose pj's to be some numbers positive, which sum up to 1. Big or equal to 0, right? Uh, can one read it? No. OK. <laughs> pj's. Right. OK, so now we know that maybe some letter is more probable than some other letter, right? And now we can define the measure on the product, the product measure. <coughs> we first define it on cylinders. So mu of the cylinder is, how do you think what? <laughs> A product of what? Yes. Exactly. Yes. The product of the piece. So PA1, etc. PAN. So, what is important? For the cylinder, it is only important which letters are here. What is not important is where the letters are. It only depends on the probability of, of these A's and not on J's. Okay, this is important. And that is why mu is T invariant. On cylinders, at least, first, right? And then one can extend mu. So first we define mu on cylinders and extend uh, to, to the sigma algebra generated by the cylinders. Well, this is done by the Carter Theodori extension theorem. Now, it is enough to define measure on a subring, and then one can extend it to the generated sigma algebra. Okay. So mu is the product measure, right? The product measure, it's called the product measure, corresponding to the original distribution P. It depends on P, of course. Kolmogorov extension theorem, but he relies on Okay, Kolmogorov, okay. 
Okay, okay, yes. For example, <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so I mean, yeah. it's a cultural difference. Ah, okay, interesting. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, and then the mesh is T preserving and even more. So we have not, the, not only the prey images have the same measure, but also the images have the same measure. It doesn't matter whether you shift to left to right. The measure doesn't depend on that. So for every A in sigma. And this under S x mu t is called then the two-sided, the invertible or two-sided Bernoulli shift. So how do you think, what is then the one-sided <laughs> Bernoulli shift? So two one-sided shift. How do you think? <laughs> well, before we could yeah, shift left and right. <laughs> We had two infinities, and now we have, we'll have only one. So we, we don't take z, we take n, or n0. We can essentially shift only one way. The other way is not well defined. Right. So x, x is almost the same, but to the power n. n is for me 1, 2, 3, etc. T is again the left shift. Left shift is well defined. You just forget the first letter. Right? You're the same. And sigma is mu as, the, as before. There are cylinders. The prey image has the same measure because the prey image, right? What happens with the cylinder? Well, you have the coordinates somewhere here, right? For example, this is restricted, this is not restricted, this is restricted again, etc. The prey image of it is, <laughs> you have here, you shift it, right? And the first coordinate is just arbitrary. You edit, you didn't add a restriction, so the measure is the same. Before, so, and then we have mu of t minus 1 of a is still mu of a, but the images can have really bigger image. If you had a restriction on the first coordinate and forget it, then you have a really bigger measure. So, so this MDS is called the one-sided Bernoulli shift. Could another example? These are group rotations. Group rotations. So what is a group rotation? We need a group. So let G be a group. The compact group. What is a compact group? So a compact group is first of all a topological space. Compact to topological space. Topological space, which is a group. But these two structures 
the group structure and the topology have something to do with each other. Otherwise, it's not a compact group. What does it mean? It means that the um, group, yes, the group operations, uh, which are the multiplication or addition, and taking the inverse, they are continuous. So in group and so the group operation from G times G to G and the operators of taken minus one, <laughs> the inverse from G to G, they are both continuous. This is a compact group. So then there exists a unique probability measure. Mu on well on the Borel sigma algebra. Generated by open sets. If you have it at the topology, you always have the Borel sigma algebra. Right? And there exists a unique probability measure which is invariant under Rotations. What are the rotations? So you have you have a group. You can rotate by fixed g. Just multiply. Okay. Well, you just can take an element g and rotate the group by this element. You can do it left and right. right. There is left rotation, just multiplication. Right. Wow. You have A goes to G A or A goes to A G. Um, yes. So, which is invariant? Under all rotations, under all left rotations. So mu of A, A is the same as mu of A for every element A. Oh, I had G there. OK, let's take G in G and for every A in sigma. One measure which is good for all these transformations. So on a group, you, you have many transformations, right? Every element gives a transformation. And there is one measure which is good for all of them. And it is called, so this is without a proof. We don't have <laughs> to proof. Um, so mu is called the Haar measure. <coughs> on G. And mu has several very nice properties. So properties. <coughs> what is this? Could I ask yes. Is it a hard theorem? And is it, uh, it, uh, it is not a very hard theorem, no. Uh, it is. Well, this is, can be actually proved by some nice application of function analysis. No, it's not, uh, not a hard. Is it a named theorem? Is it named after someone, or is it just kind of a generic, it's a hard theorem? Um, uh, probably, I don't know, yes. It's just existence of the hard measure, yeah. Yes, which we don't have yet. <laughs> yes, but one can do it, yes, with, without ergodic theory. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. No, it's, it's a very nice, actually, very nice proof. Um, um, yes. I can only encourage. <laughs> to read. So, but here are some properties, again, without proof. Properties of the Haar measure.
also no proof. Just for your information, that this measure has very nice properties. For example, it is also automatically right invariant. It is defined as a left invariant measure, but it is also automatically right invariant. It means right invariant. So mu of a g is also the same as mu of a for every g and a sigma. Okay. Then mu also respects the inverse operation. So mu is invariant with respect to g goes to g minus 1. It means that mu of the inverse, well, of a minus 1, defined point wise, is the same as mu of a for every a in sigma. And one more property the support of mu is the whole g. What does it mean? Every open set has positive measure. There is no open set with, with measure zero. Every u in g open. Well, one can, one can use uniqueness if it would not. Yeah. Um, open mu of u is not zero. Good. Now some examples. Okay. Right, examples. So G is a finite group, finite discrete group, right? No topology. I mean, discrete topology. Um, discrete topology. Then, of course, it is a, well, it is a compact group. Every, every map is continuous, right? There is no. And uh, yes, and mu of A is by right, the counting measure. And this is invariant under all rotations. Now, uh, the interval 0, 1 with the operation plus mod 1. This is the group operation. And the topology is the usual, right? Um, so here I mean a, b is just a plus b mod 1. So here, what is the Lebesgue measure here? <laughs> it's just the, well, the Haar measure. It's just the Lebesgue measure, yes. So the back measure is hard. Mm. Right, the shift invariant. And we know it's unique, so it has to be the Lebesgue measure then. So often one can just see what the measure is. Um, so the same example from a bit different point of view is just T, which is the unit circle. So ergodic theorists, theorists actually <laughs> prefer the unit circle to the interval. <laughs> oh, ma many of them, OK. Many of them do. One sees uh, simply better what happens on the circle. Right, is it, this is the same example. It's clear what the multiplication is, the normal multiplication. And so unit circle. Circle. And here, well, also the Ha measure is, well, is it the Lebesgue measure? <laughs> uh, or should one do something with the Lebesgue measure? <laughs> exactly, yeah, normalized, yes. Normalized Lebesgue measure, yes. Over to pi, exactly. 
This is Har. The Har measure. Notation invariant. Now, attention. Of course, this Har measure gives rise to many dynamical systems, right? Every G is fine. Right. But if G is fixed, there may be other invariant measures. There is only one which is good for all, right? But there may be measures which are good for some particular G and which are different from the Har measure. And th this is the, the following homework. <laughs> so first, attention for a fixed, fixed G. There may be, can be many, you will see, really many, a in a G invariant measures. So, homework. First, we just consider the rotation on the circle. So, we have T and let G um, G be rational. Is it clear what rational number on a unit on the unit circle is? You mean that it's um, it's e to i to i to pi times something rational? Yes. So actually, some power is one. A, um, right. This is a. Um, um, I had what uh, the root, yeah, root of unity, root of unity, rational. So uh, there is n so that g n is one. Oh, this is the same what you said, right? Two pi times rational angle, yes. Rational. Describe. So find. Sorry. Yes. Excuse me? Uh, would you upload this file somewhere that we can have it or do we need to write down? Uh, uh, to write down, did, you mean this, describe, what does it mean? Yes, everything that you just wrote. I mean, would this file be somewhere that we can... <coughs> ah, yes, the file, of course. Okay. Yes, uh, it will be, I don't know, do you know where it will be? On the web page. On the web page of the lecture, probably. Yes, of course. Okay. If if it will be saved, uh, sometimes you see uh, the program. Uh, yes. I hope it will. <laughs> Let's see. So describe all g invariant g invariant probability measures. Borel probability measures on on t. I will give a hint, or oh, maybe a picture just. So if G is a root of, root of unity, let's take a simple root of unity. Uh, right. Rotation invariant. It means that the, the measure of this interval is the same as the measure of this interval, and it's the same as the measure of this interval. And this is the only condition. Rotation invariant by this G. OK. I'll not say more. Okay. Good. Um, two. Now, the rational case, you will see there will be really, really many of such measures. Um, now, if G is irrational, T and let G be irrational. So there is no yeah, power when we have one. Show that the above mu above mu equals to the back divided to, to pi. So the Har measure is the only one G invariant measure. There, there is only one 
the invariant measure for a fixed irrational number uh, is the only one only one uh, G invariant probability measure. So it, these cases are really different. G is rational or G is irrational. You will see it will often be the, the case with the unit circle. So there are two completely different situations. Probability measure on T. On T and here a hint. Show first. So first that A N that the orbit of oh G, sorry. The orbit of G. So if G is irrational. Then it means that the orbit doesn't hit one. But then the orbit is even dense. So if G is irrational, then the orbit is dense. Dense in T. Right, and then there will be this um, well, you uh, we need some other letter. Okay, H. <laughs> A. You want to prove this. So what you do? So how, how do you how do you do the exercise? You assume that you have a G invariant measure. And you show that this G invariant measure is a rotation invariant. Then it has to be the Haar measure because there is only one rotation invariant measure. So you, you need to take an arbitrary age, right? And show this. And you have it only for G. But then you have it also for G square and for any power. And then you use that you can approximate this age by a power. And you do it for intervals. Right. Okay, I hope it's enough. Uh, hint. <laughs> Good. By the way, the lectures will also be online, so <laughs> not only the file. Um, right. Further, three. There are, of course, <laughs> much more examples. So show show that zero one with the Lebesgue measure. is an MDS for following transformations. Tx is, so one doesn't have to take rotation. One can take other transformation to become MDS. Mod 1. So what kind of transformation is this? 0, 1. It looks like this, 1 half. And this is the Dublin map. Or with a very similar map, <laughs> which looks like, like this. This is the tent map. Okay, now the formula Tx is 2x mod 1. Okay, 2x if x is in 0, 1 half. And 2 minus 2x if x in 1 half, 0, uh, 1. That these are in the S. Well, here you don't need a hint. 
here is just the definition actually. <laughs> Um, for the sec well, the fourth example are, well, is a connection to stochastics. Of course, there is already a connection to stochastics because we have a probability space, right? But here is, well, even better connection to stochastics. Stationary pro stochastic processes. processes are nothing else as MDS, shift invariant, invariant measures on, uh, on a product space. And here, just R to the, to the power is here. So, Let we start with the probability space. Probability space. And then we have a process. So we have infinitely many and infinitely many in both directions random variables from omega to r measurable functions. Measurable so random variables. Now, assume that the process is stationary. Stationary. This means that So the probability omega in omega so that the n first function in omega belongs to some set B1, etc. And then the so finitely many, if we take finitely many functions and check these conditions in Bm. And then this probability doesn't change. It will shift the time. And 1 plus k of omega in B1, etc., f and m plus k of omega in Bm. And this should be true for every k and 1 and n m in z. And for all sets B1, etc., Bm and R measurable. So now the picture. We have here omega, omega p. And we have here infinitely many copies of R. Here is F0, here is F1, F2, and here is F minus 1, etc. Now, we fixed first these coordinates, n1 to nm. So we choose finitely many functions here. It means we choose here finitely many coordinates which will, we will Restrict. So here is B1, say, and here is B2, right, etc. Finitely many sets. And then we consider the pre images of these sets, omega, which go here. So here the pre image under F1, here the pre image are under minus F1. So, and we consider this the set, the, the measure P of the intersection. Now, if we shift this sets B by K. Then, of course, the parameters will be different. The picture will be different. But the measure will be the same. Here we will have different picture, but the measure of the intersection is the same. This is the stationary process. So, 
omega p, right? And here there are several copies, and here these are these b's, f0, etc., f1, and then this intersection. So essentially, you can choose your zero time as you wish. Now, I claim there is an MDS which describes this process. How you construct. So first you need a space. And the space, yes. Well, the space is already here. This is already here. This will be our x. We have the space, we have the transformation, which is the shift, right? Above or below, left to right. And we need a measure. So define, first to define the MDS, define f from omega to x. Just to simplify, let us take, here we have many functions, many functions. We just denote it by one function, which goes, goes to the product. So, so x will be r to the power z, and f of omega, well, how do you think, how we define f of omega? There will be infinitely many coordinates, and every coordinate is just f, j, right? There is no other way, essentially. <laughs> there is only one way to define it. So just coordinate wise. F0 of omega, F1 of omega, etc. Right. So x we have. The shift we have. We need, we need the measure. And the measure is, is defined by this f. So for a in x measurable, for the product measure. Uh, sorry, for the product sigma algebra. We define, so define mu of a. So there is also essentially the only way to define, to define the measure here. We need to define the measure on cylinders. Right? The cylinder have this form, more or less. Finitely many uh, restrictions, otherwise no restriction. Now, we have the function f from here to here. And we have here already a measure. So we just take the corresponding measure here, the image measure. We have a is just p of the pre-image. Also, actually, the only way to define right, the measure. Now, the exercise show that this is an MDS. Where this is the left shift again, or left is now probably below shift, shift below, left shift. T of xj is again xj plus 1. So you just need to show the t is measure preserving, the shift is measure preserving. And this is essentially, this is actually the stationarity. Let's know. This is just the same as stationarity. So now you see, uh, for all stationary processes, the space is the same, and the transformation is the same. It's always the left shift on r to the power z. So the whole information about the stationary process is here, in the mu. Okay, what should I do with that? Right. 
All right, so we have a way from stationary processes, sta stationary, sta stationary <coughs> process is actually a, an invariant measure on R to the power Z, shift invariant measure. probability measure on r to the power z. And now the way back is also, well, for every shift invariant measure on r to the power z, there is a stationary process for this measure. Now, way back, uh, or converse, converse. Well, uh, it depends. If the stationary process was in both directions, then here the both directions. If the stationary process was in one direction, then here in one direction. This is correspondence. Yes. Uh, the, so converse. So show that. <laughs> and conversely, if if we have an MDS of this form, so if we have a shift invariant measure on R to the power z. So is an MDS. Then there is omega and p and the fjs, the stationary process behind, uh, which induces induces well this measure, this MDS. Okay, and here, well, this conversely is actually very quick. So if you already have, if you already have this shift invariant system, right, measure preserving system here, shift, shift invariant measure, and you need this <laughs> omega and p, that, then you just copy it here. You have already a probability space. You have it already, right? You need these Fs. How do you construct from here to here? Fs. From here to R, from here to R, from here to R. How would you do that? Uh, you need a function from here to this R, from here to this R, to the first coordinate, to the second coordinate. So these are just coordinate maps, projections. So it's, it's actually, th this is, well, this is P, what is it then? I don't know, four, P3, et cetera. They are also already there. This is easy to check. So this exercise is actually very, <laughs> well, quick to do as soon as one <laughs> has this picture in mind. And just to understand the connection is the most difficult part. As soon as you did it, to check this measure preserving property and to check that th these are fine is just very quick. OK, so this was a connection to stochastics. And next time we will do more, hopefully more examples. Good, thanks.